All right. Oh, yes, it's working. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Nice. All right. So um, today we're going to talk about deep fakes and, well, uh, detecting them um, mostly. Um, if you are working in AI or anything like this and are expecting to learn very advanced stuff, uh, sorry, you're not in the right place. But today we're going to have some fun uh, looking at, well, what I mean by deep fakes uh, with a website you probably know. Um, so this is the website called thispersondoesnotexist.com. Any of you know this website? Yes, OK, so around maybe half the room. So this is a uh, website. Um, it's a demonstrator of a machine learning model where every time you refresh the page, basically, you are going to have a new face, a gen uh, randomly generated face. OK? And so, well, um, we are going to have some fun with uh, that detector today. Th that, sorry, that uh, generator. Um, first of all, a few words about myself. So I am uh, Matisse, Matisse Amel. Um, I'm from Paris. I live in France. Um, and, well, I work at Coding Game. Um, Coding Game, just in a few words, maybe you know. Is there anyone, any Coding Game user in the room? Yes, there's always one. <laughs> All right, so um, Coding Game is a website, a free website, where you can learn and get better at programming. Um, it's in English, so you should be fine, um, even though we are a French uh, platform. Um, basically, what you do is you pilot video games using code. So here it's like a small game where you have to stop a fire that's spreading uh, by cutting trees, and so your code selects which trees to cut. Uh, you have to... Um, get the highest score possible. We have AI challenges as well. Um, I've been a user of that platform since way before joining the company, and it's always a great lot of fun. And we also have escape games uh, as of recently, which are also free to play. Um, well, the company also, our business is uh, not this, because uh, the platform generates absolutely zero dollars. Uh, and it costs quite a lot because we have 3 million users. We um, also have this uh, testing platform, so um, technical interview platform where basically you can filter your candidates uh, automatically with our tests. So we send automated tests with games and uh, multiple choice questions. So you can, um, well, basically have a detailed score of your candidate without spending any engineering time uh, with the candidate, with the pre-filtering. All right, um, so my talk today has absolutely nothing to do with that, uh, with the company, but they're playing, paying for my flights, so I guess I am have to mention them. Um, it's about a side project I have. Uh, we'll get into the story a bit later. Just as an intro, so um, this person does not exist. It's a website uh, that it's a demonstrator for a model called StyleGAN2, which is a generator, um, so a neural network that can generate some images. We are going to see how it works as well. Um, and so here you can see nine faces that have been generated by uh, this neural network. Well, actually, there's only eight faces that have been generated by a neural network, and one is a real person. OK, want to play a game? OK, so um, we're going to start from the top left. So here is number one, then number two. OK, we'll number it like that. So who thinks it's number one, the real person? Yes, OK, you're always, you always have a bit of doubt in the beginning. OK, who thinks it's number two? All right, not much. I hope you'll get a bit warmer as we go. Number three, OK, a few people there. Um, yeah, that's the one I uh, always get fooled by as well. Uh, number four? Okay, what about number five? Uh, yes, a lot of people. Yes, that's not the real one either. Um, number six? Mm -hmm. Seven? What about eight? Ooh. And number nine? Okay, so you are actually a very... I guess, um, fake detecting audience. Uh, this is a very strong country because that's the first time, actually, the 
like relative majority is right, so it was number eight. This guy at the bottom was right. So you, you can give yourselves a round of applause if you got it right. Um, but um, yes, so as you can see, uh, maybe like 20% of the room got it right. So we see that um, artificial faces are now way in the way of fooling us uh, in terms of uh, realism. So the website, thispersondoesnotexist.com, it's free. You can, you can go check it out even in, on your phone. Uh, um, do F5 all the time. Uh, I, it's a great uh, pastime activity. Um, it's a demonstrator of a neural network that was made by NVIDIA. So it was designed by that company, well, NVIDIA. <coughs> they make GPUs nowadays. GPUs, not so much for gaming, but neural networks and blockchains, right? So they are uh, doing a lot of research on neural networks. And uh, StyleGAN2 is one of uh, their latest accomplishments. Um, and it's massively used online uh, to create fake social media profiles. Because like five years ago, when you wanted to make a fake social media profile, well, the name, super easy to generate a fake one, address, phone number, even credit card numbers. Now you can have like virtual credit cards for free. Um, but the picture was always the hardest one to have because either you put someone that's a real person and you risk being detected because that person can uh, well, very well find out that uh, they are used in, well, you can find the, the actual person behind uh, the picture. So that's not a real uh, smart idea. Oth otherwise, uh, you put uh, like a random abstract art or something, but it doesn't make your fake profile trustworthy. And uh, well, detecting fake profiles is uh, very much of use in um, well the current day and age because we have uh, basically political manipulation. We have uh, well a lot of uh, things that are related with spreading uh, fake news and social media as well. And uh, a lot of that revolves around uh, gathering a lot of uh, profiles to pretend that you have a lot of supporters, because there's a lot of profi profiles uh, sharing one opinion. Um, so, well, the last, s the last uh, barrier uh, between um, creating a fake personas and a realistic fake personas is uh, the picture. But uh, using that kind of website that you see, well, uh, it's not a barrier anymore, and anyone can do it. By the way, this website, uh, even though there's um, lot of uh, different options nowadays, uh, it's still used uh, a lot. So this specific website is, uh, is <laughs> a very strong element of that kind of uh, thing. Um, well, and as I was saying, uh, style gan so, so the neural network, it's pretty hard to train. Um, so most people will go to the website and not have like their own instance of their own trained neural network. And so Basically, if we manage to find a way to hack that website, uh, that could be a huge win uh, in terms of um, detecting that kind of fake social media profile to fight against uh, misinformation, basically. Um, but uh, first, I want to take a sidestep, uh, because we have some time today. I want to talk a bit about how this kind of system works, because it's super impressive to see an AI generate super realistic pictures. You have seen DALI recently, um, or a stable diffusion mid-journey. Uh, AIs that generate art that's super realistic, that you couldn't even tell that it was made by a machine. Um, GANs, so um, that kind of uh, network is uh, quite easy to understand, actually. Um, well, we'll skip. Uh, the part where I explain exactly what a neural network is. But what you need to know is that a neural network, is, it's a sequence of math operations. So basically, the circles are additions, uh, the arrows are multiplications, OK? That's the very weird scheme that you see, uh, the, the diagram, that diagram that looks super complex and like you figure it's they have an actual human brain or something. No, it's just a modeling of, yes, how the brain works. Uh, and so that works with electrical signals and stuff like that. Uh, in computer modeling, we model that with numbers, and that's how we teach a, a machine how to think. 
So um, uh, those, uh, well, math operations, we can adjust their weights, so the, the parameters of the model, so that they can learn to do something. And this task is super specific that we are going to teach the AI. And that can be a lot of stuff, but we are always going to teach it with examples or uh, an, a way or, or another. Um, present it with an example of an input, see what it gives as an output, and um, refine, uh, fine tune the model given what it gave versus what was expected. So we have a lot of examples to provide it. That's why we need huge data sets. Um, so yeah, you, what you have to remember is that a neural network, basically it's a uh, math black box that can learn to perform a very specific task. A uh, few examples include uh, finding a plant species uh, from a picture. That's an actual app that you can download. It's called PlantNet uh, on Android and iOS. Uh, and it's super useful, like you have you're uh, walking around, see a very nice flower, wonder th what that is, just a single picture, and it will give you a lot of information around that and find out which exact species that is. Um, also, one, one project I worked on was to evaluate car damage from a video, so it was for an insurance company. Uh, basically, you have a car accident, and they don't want to dispatch an expert at every accident or even to look at the video of the damage, so we had an AI. Uh, try to do that. Um, uh, determining also, so one, one uh, very prominent use case of neural networks is uh, uh, voice uh, analysis and uh, automatic speech recognition. Um, so for one, of, uh, one very prominent example would be uh, determining in an audio stream uh, when someone says those two words that I'm not going to say because there's a lot of phones in the room. Um, also, another project I used to work on was to detect suspicious uh, behavior on a computer network. So we have um, 100 gigs of uh, logs and basically try to determine if there were any users that were uh, compromised by hackers. So yeah, that's a lot of uh, different examples that we can have with neural networks. Uh, but this one specifically that I'm going to talk about today is uh, GANs. So GANs is a specific type of neural network. It's called Generative Adversarial Network. Generative, it's because, well, it generates stuff. It does not only, like, detect or classify. It can generate, well, faces in our case. Adversarial, it's because, um, well, when in machine learning you, or in, in computing, when you have something that's adversarial, it means that two things are, like, trying to outplay each other. So we're going to see why in a second. And network, well, it's because it's a neural network. In again, we actually have two networks, the generator and the discriminator, and both of them are going to train together to perform each a very specific task. So the generator, well, it's the one that's used by uh, this person does not exist, for example. It's the one that's pretty much the most useful. The other one is just used for training, but it's also very important. So the generator, we tell it, OK, generate a face picture for me, or generate a um, cat picture. Uh, this cat does not exist, is also a website. It's also super interesting. Uh, this cat does not exist.com. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. All right, um, so yeah. We, we tell it to generate a picture of what, whatever we want. Um, the input, the source of entropy, is just because neural networks are uh, deterministic, which means that if we give it like no input or just always the same input, it will always provide the same result. So this is just to make it so that it generates different images every time. So we just provide it random garbage here, and it will uh, serve basically as a seed for, for the random data. Okay, so this is the one, so I'm not uh, telling you now um, how we train this network, but we're going to get to it in a second. The discriminator is the enemy of the generator. We will present it with an image, and it's going to determine whether or not it's an actual image from real life, or 
if it was generated by a neural network, which is the generator. So the full experiment setup looks like this. We, have, uh, we are going to play a series of kind of small games. Every time we're going to pick either a real image from the real data set or an image that was made by the generator. And the discriminator is going to have to pick whether or not it's a real picture or not. So it's, it doesn't know where, where it comes from in that pipeline, but it's going to have to determine that. And so basically, both of them are going to train. So the generator is going to learn uh, progressively to make more and more realistic faces. And the discriminator is going to be much uh, better at picking up small clues that uh, an image may, may or may not be realistic. So initially, we have those two uh, networks. They are outputting random garbage. So uh, basically, the generator prints uh, random noise images, so they look all gray and mushy. Um, the discriminator will just return yes, no at random. But over time, well, we will they, they will train better over time because we will reward, um, well, the discriminator, if it gets the answer right, we will reward the generator if it manages to fool the discriminator. So in the end, they are going to uh, slowly, iteratively, get better at their own jobs. Um, so yeah, in each game, only one of the two networks wins. So either the discriminator manages to find out correctly what the real image is, or um, the, um, the generator manages to fool the discriminator. And so um, they will get both get, so I was saying, rewarded. Uh, it means basically that we reinforce their um, weights in the neural networks that made them have this correct answer. It's, it's a bit complex, uh, this notion of loss and things like that, but uh, it basically works like that, like the network will be rewarded and understand that what it did uh, was the correct behavior, so uh, try to replicate that more in the future. Uh, well, there's a lot of difficulties. I was mentioning that GANs are uh, super hard to train um, and expensive as well, so um, overfitting is uh, one of them, so basically we it will be um, that kind of green line, you know, it's uh, on the training data, it, it will have perfect performance, but uh, when we have real-world data, uh, it's going to perform worse than the black line that just has some um, error margin left in the training. We also have a slow convergence, so training again is super slow, because as you can see, the generator, which is in charge of generating faces of humans, in the training, it only ever sees random data. It never sees the, ran the real images, which means that it only has to guess a lot, a lot, a lot of times what a real face looks like. And after a very long time, it, yes, it will, it will start to get better and generate realistic faces just by guessing random uh, stuff and seeing whether or not it managed to fool the discriminator. So um, computing power, which goes pretty much with the slow convergence, you need a lot of GPU power to train again. And there's also one last thing that's um, a property of the generator, which, which is called the mode collapse. It's basically the generator will always generate the same image that's very good to fool the discriminator. Then once the discriminator catches on, it will switch to another and another, and so it will just generate always the same single image, which is not really good if we want diversity in the, in the results. Um, so those are all the difficulties um, that explain why, uh, for example, disinformation networks or uh, evil uh, threat actors on the internet don't go through the troubles of having their own model. Uh, so they basically will always use uh, that kind of website. So, um, to detect uh, images that were generated by a GAN, we have a few options. So maybe uh, we want to use a style GAN's discriminator. So the models, by the way, uh, of style GAN 2 are public. So you can download the uh, neural network that is pre-trained. That means that we can use the discriminator to maybe, uh, I have a face here. Um, oops, sorry, this one. 
I have a face here. I plug it into the neural network of the discriminator, and maybe it's going to tell me, uh, yes, that's a fake picture or not. But um, we also have the second option of uh, training our own discriminator in some way. But actually, if any of those two options were viable, um, that means that we have built a discriminator that's uh, more efficient than a 50-50 chance, which means that we have beaten uh, NVIDIA research team at their own job. Because the, at the end of the training, the, the game basically stalls out, and the performance is basically 50-50 for each, and there is no more improvement. If we manage to detect artificial faces more than half the time, it means that we have beaten the game. And well, uh, I alone, on my uh, spare, spare time, I do not pretend to be better than a whole uh, ML research team. So I guess uh, we can scratch those two out and uh, try to find another way. So GANs are based on a game, you know, the generator versus the discriminator. Um, so, well, let's cheat on that game. Um, there's two ways to cheat. Um, so, basically, you... Well, I'm not going to give you a course on theory of cheating or something, but uh, either we can exploit the rules of the game, because maybe the rules have a weird scope, and we can find a way around that. Or uh, we can also go full-on uh, reverse engineering on the properties of the images generated. Uh, by this uh, GAN. And I'm going to show you one way to do each. First, um, I want to play another little game with you. Um, this one should be a bit easier, I promise. Which uh, of those two faces is the real one? Okay, who thinks this person on the left is the real one? Okay, who thinks it's the one on the right? Yes, okay, yeah, there's always one. <laughs> um, yes, well, um, as you can see, now it's much more clearer. So what's the difference between what I've shown you on the first slide versus this one where you almost got it right? Um, there's a lot of indicators on that picture that it's the real one. Um, there's this background. Like, you never see a skyscraper on... Uh, on this person does not exist. Uh, you never see such detailed background like this. You always get like this greenish or grayish background. Um, there's the face pose as well. Like open mouth is almost never happens on, on that kind of stuff. The format as well. Uh, images on this person does not exist are always square, uh, 1024 pixels wide. Um, as it's on the right picture, here we have a rectangular uh, thing. So there's a lot of indications uh, that a picture may come from um, uh, this uh, deepfake website. Um, and that comes uh, from somewhere. So let me explain about uh, the FFHQ dataset. So FFHQ means Flickr Faces High Quality. It means uh, pictures that have been tagged uh, Creative Commons uh, on Flickr, um, that team has downloaded like 70,000 of them, uh, cropped them to be square, and uh, that's basically it. That's an open source dataset. Uh, so those are all the uh, all the pictures that uh, come from it. And um, this person doesn't exist. And Stargan 2 on Faces has been trained explicitly on that dataset. There's one very interesting property of that dataset. Uh, if you read the research paper, it's uh, written uh, black and white. I'm going to uh, add something. Sorry, it's the picture is a bit cursed. Uh, you know, the, the laser eyes. Um, but basically, you can see that the eyes are always in the same position. So those are real people uh, from the training data set. And the eyes are always in the same position. It's a property of the data set uh, because, well, it makes training a bit easier. But what that will tell us is that, well, StyleGAN, uh, the generator, it, will, it, it is trying to fool the discriminator. So it, it has to reproduce as closely as possible the, uh, the training data set. So it means that the eyes always have to be on the same place. So if I go back to uh, this person does not exist, you will see that 
the eyes are always at the same place. So that's a strong pre-indicator. This is not 100% uh, true because, well, uh, either one person could, uh, by bad luck, have their eyes in that exact position. Uh, I invite you to try on your Facebook friends or on Twitter. It's actually quite rare to have people with uh, this uh, eye position on their profile picture, but it can happen. Um, conversely, we can also have, well, the the you know the person owning the fake uh, profile uh, that basically knows about this technique. It's it's a known technique. It's not mine. Uh, and crops the picture, or maybe face swaps onto someone else's picture uh, to blur the tracks. Um, but this is a good pre-indicator that a profile might be fake. And you'll see a lot of them if you're uh, on Twitter, especially on political Twitter. There's a whole lot of them. But that doesn't give us a great performance and, um, uh, and a strong confidence uh, that a profile is fake or not. S but uh, so that's our uh, first experiment. Now we can also um, do some reverse engineering. So let me show you a small experiment I made. Um, here on the left, it's a script that downloads the picture um, like uh, in a loop, in, a, in an infinite loop. It downloads the picture from this person does not exist, and it prints the first characters of the hash. And what you see on the right is the results. And what you can see is that we have some duplicates, like. Uh, um, pictures that have been downloaded uh, very closely together uh, in time, they are actually the same. If I do this here, I'm going to try refreshing. Yes, so you can see like, I refresh like three times and it's the same picture every time. Um, so first I was like, oh, this might be a um, cache issue or something, like a cache that expires after a second or something. Um, then you try doing a lot of stuff, but actually, this this works. This is uh, uh, all the time you w you will get uh, the same picture a few times in a row. Uh, by the way, I discovered that while myself generating a lot of fake faces, uh, but I promise I'm not uh, a botnet administrator for uh, Russian trolls or something. It was just for an experiment. Um, but. Basically, what we have is that there's a global cache. So I tried maybe from two different browsers, two different IPs. The pictures are the same at the other end of the world. If two people basically load the page at the same second, they will get the same picture. This means that uh, every person around the globe is served the same image at the same time. So if someone were crazy enough to download all those pictures uh, every second and put them in an index, maybe. Uh, that would mean that they get all the pictures that have been generated by this network, and then they can maybe face match uh, to detect whether or not a picture comes from that website or not. And that's exactly what I did. Um, so I have this uh, downloader script. Uh, it downloads 50 images a minute, so it's 1.2 seconds, actually, the cache. Um, and that's what I figured. Uh, by the way, I think this uh, property comes from the fact that, well, it's a demonstrator, and maybe the person uh, who owns the website only has uh, computing power to generate one image every 1.2 seconds and doesn't want their cloud costs to explode when there's a spike in, uh, in requests, so they just have a cache and serve the same uh, picture um, with um, just one computation every second. Um, so yeah, we have this uh, downloader script that stores it into, let's say, a hard drive um, that contains all the pictures uh, made by uh, this person does not exist.com. By the way, this uh, detection technique, of course, only works for pictures that have been generated while this script was running, well, because it cannot predict anything that uh, has been. Uh, generating outside of those uh, kind of working hours. I've tried uh, reverse engineering that further, uh, but it was uh, too hard and there's no obvious uh, choice in how those images are generated. So uh, we're stuck with that, but the script has been running nonstop for like two years now, so we're mostly fine. Pictures older than that usually belong to 
uh, accounts that have been banned anyway. And well, of course, uh, now when I have a suspicious, a suspicious profile picture, I can plug it through a script that will maybe check on the disk for um, and try to find that image. And um, that's basically it. Well, actually, this looks easy, but it's actually not. Uh, because if we take a look at the scale of that uh, script and the data that's processed, we have uh, 72,000 new images per day uh, on uh, the JPEGs generated, so 124 by 124. Uh, we have around 450 kilobytes. So uh, each day we are downloading around 32 gigs of data that is being stored in the disk. And uh, conversely, when we want to check that a picture is real or not, what we will have to do is go through all of that uh, storage space to try to find a matching picture. We could do that with hashing, so I, I I think a lot of you uh, may be wondering, yeah, well, do a hash. Uh, do like you compute the SHA-1 of the image and you try to find it in the database. It's only like um, a hash table. It's super easy to make and uh, very cost effective, uh, space effective. But actually, uh, on social media, usually they will, the, the server will slightly edit the image. Uh, so there's some compression. So for example, Twitter, compresses it down to 400 by 400 pixels. So we would have to find a way to detect how Twitter does that. And so I didn't want to do like with a cryptographic hash, but I wanted to find a way to do a fast matching of one picture into a database of millions of pictures. Um, so yes, that's what I mentioned. So storage space, I don't want to buy 11 terabytes of disk every uh, year. Uh, the lookup time as well, if we do a linear search on all the disk, on all the images to try to find a visual match on the picture, it will take days and days. So uh, we also have this uh, additional hardware constraints. That's what I mentioned in the conference title, like $100. Um, this, I'm not sure if you recognize, uh, it's not a Raspberry Pi, it's called a Jetson Nano. So it's basically a Raspberry Pi with a GPU on top. It's made by NVIDIA and it's made for like prototyping small uh, GPU applications. So for example, uh, um, neural networks are one type. Um, so on that, um, this is by the way a photo I took in my living room. Um, it's uh, 256 gigabytes of hard disk, so not a lot. Uh, so it's only a few days of downloading all the pictures. We have to find a way to compress that somehow. Uh, we have four gigabytes of RAM, we have a very tiny CPU, but we have a GPU that we can play with if we want. So I leveraged uh, neural networks, the power of neural networks, with another technology that's called FaceNet. It's basically a hashing technology for faces. So you give to FaceNet one picture of a face, the face of someone, and uh, it will give you back a vector uh, that corresponds to, that kind of describes the face. And so two pictures of the same person taken in very different conditions should give you the same vector or a very similar vector, so a similar hash. And um, two people, um, two different people taken maybe even in the same conditions, like same uh, facial expression, same clothes, same background, uh, same age. If those two people don't really look like each other, the, the hashes will be uh, very far apart from each other. So that's uh, one technology that we can leverage to do a fast search and not use a cryptographic hash like MD5 or SHA-1, uh, which would uh, correspond to a perfect match and be fooled by just a single pixel's difference. Here we have, uh, even if uh, the attacker is uh, using like some sort of morphing technique like compression or scaling or stuff like that, we will still be able to find uh, their face in the index. So um, one hash uh, made by FaceNet is uh, 512 float values. I think there must be uh, neural networks that um, compress it even uh, further, but two kilobytes is very fine uh, given our constraints. And so we have a 225 to one uh, disk reduction uh, for the storage space. 
because now we don't have to store the pictures anymore. We just have to store their, uh, their hashes, the hash of the face, to find it efficiently. Um, it's also a neural network, so it's super fast to compute on our GPU. So even if we have small uh, CPU, it's completely fine. Um, we can also do a much faster lookup. So to do exact match, there's a lot of different technologies uh, that you can do well for databases. For uh, approximate match, because the vector might not be the exact same one, if there is a small modification on the image, uh, I'm using uh, Elasticsearch OpenDistro for something that's called KNN Search. KNN is basically um, fuzzy search, so you tell, uh, you tell Elasticsearch to find for similar results uh, in a vector of numbers. And so we can index and search our uh, faces very easily and in a fast way. So uh, the new architecture looks like this. Um, so we have now our downloader scripts will uh, pass all the images through FaceNet, which uh, the vectors will be indexed on this uh, kind of vector or visual hash uh, database. And then when, when we want to find out whether or not a face is real, we just do the same. We plug it through uh, FaceNet and do an Elasticsearch query to find maybe the top three faces that match. Um, well, this actually has some kind of limitation because uh, the Elasticsearch query would only give you like a matching score. Uh, so tell you, yeah, I found a face in my database with like 99.8% confidence. Yeah, that's fine, but I don't know the reliability of the tool. So I have added one more uh, small feature, which is the picture um, that is passed through FaceNet. Um, well, we should destroy it to not waste too much disk space. But actually, I'm uh, compressing it a lot, so storing it in a very tiny image. Um, and so that is still a strong gain in uh, size. But we can do a visual match as well. So when the Elasticsearch query returns like the top three matches, I can also show side by side the top three images that would match. They are very small and blurry, but uh, it's very good to confirm that the score is actually uh, meaningful. So um, bonus points. So compared to um, com kind of cryptographic hash, we would have uh, a technique that's very resistant to a lot of um, obscuring techniques. Uh, so uh, someone who's trying to be sneaky and use those pictures by, for example, taking the face, face swapping it on a stock photo. Well, uh, if the face is the same, uh, it's fine. Uh, we can still detect it like this. So cropping, noise, uh, compression, rotation, everything like this. Um, there is absolutely no issue. Even like if they flip the image, the face is still the same pretty much. So uh, we can find it with very high confidence score because basically they are keeping the, the, the exact same image. Also, there's one thing I didn't speak about. It's since each image generated by uh, this person does not exist.com is uh, unique, I've actually from like the few million images I have, there haven't been two that were the same. It means that uh, we can also, in that uh, result query, uh, in that database, we can also store the, the exact time at which the corresponding picture was downloaded. And so we can know exactly at what time our fake profile picture was generated as well. This can be useful, for example, uh, if you have a lot of profiles that you suspect to belong to the same person, uh, and you realize that uh, even though their accounts were created a few days apart, the pictures always, um, they are like 30 seconds apart. Well, that's a pretty strong indicator that they actually belong to the same person. All right. Um, Let's pray because uh, you know the demo effect. This uh, this project could be should be called the demo effect uh, demo because it's like the pinnacle of all what can fail. Um, so yeah, that that is the front end. As you can see, I'm not a front end engineer. Please do not judge. I'm not a back end engineer either. I just I want to find excuses. So yeah, let's just generate a picture. So that's the picture that has been generated just now. Okay, 
let me uh, download that image. Um, the, the images are indexed in real time. So I can show you right here. It's running on my server uh, at home. It's uh, every five pictures downloaded, it, uh, it calls for uh, indexing. So it takes about five seconds for an image to be fully indexed and searchable, which is way more than enough. So we take uh, this person. Um, yes, yeah, she has uh, odd colored eyes, like uh, two different colors, but uh, that's fine, I guess. Um, it always generates like asymmetrical faces, uh, this website, so uh, it's they are quite easy to detect if you zoom in hard enough, actually. Um, but yeah, you can see here it's the top, top uh, three matches. Uh, I also have the timestamp right here, and we can see very easily that it's a 100% match with the visual, and you understand that uh, even if I gave you a very uh, strong confidence score. Uh, that wouldn't be as trustworthy as having the two pictures, like that's proof. Um, also, just in case I include uh, the eye mask technique, the laser eyes, you can see it's again at the same place. Um, so yeah, um, that's uh, the tool. So we have uh, 15, maybe 16 million faces now. Uh, already indexed, uh, sub-second search, that's the theory. Well, it's, it can be 10 seconds, 60 seconds, or just down. Uh, but I'm fine with that. It's not like a very critical project of mine. Uh, it's available for free. You can play with it. It's also open source. Uh, just if you play with it, uh, remember that the server is hosted in my living room. Uh, there's actually nobody living there except my cat, which uh, is still in Paris. So uh, if, you don't, if you don't burn down my house, uh, I would be very thankful. All right, so I, um, I gave you a good discriminator, so to, to go back to uh, GAN terms, uh, discriminator generator. Now let me give you a good generator. So, um, I was mentioning earlier that StyleGAN2 is very hard to train yourself. But thankfully, NVIDIA has published their own models for completely for free. Um, and I have a um, small demo for you. Yes. So actually, I realized like two days ago that this isn't working anymore because uh, TensorFlow 1 is deprecated, but I'll fix it someday. Um, so um, I'm not sure if you know Colab. It's uh, a way of executing Python in like small cells in a notebook. So it's a Jupyter notebook, uh, but hosted by Google, and they lend you uh, good GPUs. So it's uh, pretty nice. Uh, you can also use it for um, uh, the models called um, Stable Diffusion that has uh, made the news recently. Uh, it's very nice if you don't have a GPU at home or a full ML setup. Uh, you can directly use that one and share uh, like you would do a Google Doc. So basically what we do here is uh, download the models of uh, NVIDIA. So here you can see uh, NVLabs, stylegan2.git. Uh, stylegan2 is the GAN that generates that kinds of pictures. Um, we give it the name of the model, which is uh, stylegan2 FFHQ. Uh, FFHQ, uh, as a reminder, is the name of the data set. And uh, we will generate, you can generate a face like this on your own. It takes like one second. I cannot run it right now, but I could show you just if you modify the seed um, here, uh, you can basically generate any faces you want, uh, any amount. And this uh, completely avoids detection in a style of the tool I made because, uh, well, there's not a downloader script that's the universal source of truth of all pictures ever generated. There's an infinity of pictures you can generate with that network. So this is kind of the way of going under the radar. I hope there's no uh, people actually who will use that for nefarious purposes, but you do you. Um, and also with that script, you can also generate uh, variants because there's a very interesting property. So I can show it almost live. So this was the base face. 
Uh, with just a few lines of code, we can also generate another one. So it's basically the same guy, but now he's smiling. And here, he's not. Um, this is due to a fact that uh, neural networks have this property called uh, continuity. It means, uh, basically, it's, uh, it's a continuous function, a uh, continuous mathematical function. It means that if you change the input very slightly, the output will also change very slightly. And so we can exploit that. Uh, so you remember in the neural networks, you have this uh, random data that we provided at the start. Well, that's r that random data is a vector of numbers. If we just change a few numbers here and there, um, or just change all the numbers, but by a very small amount, it will modify the output image, but in such a small way that you can just generate variants like um, here on this picture, is he's a bit older. Uh, on the left, he's a bit younger. The face pose changes. So you can still like pretend to be the same person um, to have like several profile pictures or uh, post several pictures of yourself, the fake person. Uh, but still managing to have not only the one that uh, the website generated for you and you're stuck with that for your whole life. Um, so thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, we have around 10 minutes for Q&A, so I'm completely fine. If you are shy, I will be around anyways, uh, and you can come ask more questions. Um, so yes, if uh, you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.